Laughing Out Loud, America's Funniest Comedians, featuring classic comedy performances by Rosie O'Donnell, John Ferentino, John Caponera, Max Alexander, Adam Sandler, Kelsey Grammer, Brad Garrett, and Jerry Seinfeld. Next up, Brad Garrett. All right, thank you. Thank you, this is perfect. All right, you know, a lot of times in life, the people start talking about what they really have to know because what I feel if there's something anywhere in my life, <laughs> <laughs> well, she's looking at me like, you're, you're the biggest white man I've ever seen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I seem a little rattled, I just came straight from the airport. I, I, I barely made it. Actually, what happened is uh, John Sununu and I, we went to Rio de Janeiro to, uh, to get our teeth checked. So that's why we were there. Oh, hey, how you doing? How are you? Now, how about this group? How you doing, guys, huh? All right, would you, would you lose directions to the tractor pull? What the hell's going on here? How are you, sir? Nice to see you. All right, that's... Aren't you the guy on the cover of the zigzag package? This guy right here? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I am, but anyway. I'm kidding. Are they, are they, are they laughing? Are they laughing? It's okay, look at the white guy. Well, we're gonna get our ass kicked. You happy now? And the black guy's going, go ahead, my man, go ahead. I hope it was easy, Top, go ahead. Am I sweating enough a little bit? Boy, do you have a panty shield or anything at all I can have? Would you mind can you just go? Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a... Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the show is going according to height. So uh, after this, I really want you to give it up for Kareem when he comes up here. I, should... no, I don't know. I just went to the Mexican restaurant across the street. Great food. Very authentic. I'll tell you how authentic this Mexican restaurant was. When the busboy poured me the water, he warned me not to drink it. Seriously, I couldn't believe it. And those mariachis. What is it about when you go to a restaurant like that? You ever get gang serenaded by these mariachis? You don't tip these guys, they never leave your table. You know, like, come here, le castellani. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, cha, 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 psycho. Psycho, psycho, but no tip. Two, three, four, I talk a letter, Maria. Why do they always give the smallest Mexican the biggest guitar? Have you ever noticed that? It's like, oh, no, no, no. And then the big fat Mexican has like the ukulele. You know. Am I sweating enough? Can you put another log on the air conditioner? Would that be okay? It... I got this jacket at, at, uh, at Big Fellas. They were having a mutant sale, and I uh, was kind of it was about... <laughs> it's very warm. Seriously, I'm just I'm a little bloated. It could be the outfit. It's the polyester. It gets very hot. Great outfit. How was the luau? Good. All right. I like this shirt. Give me a Dove Barn of yogurt. Could you please run away? I don't know. How you guys doing? You okay? All right. Okay, you know where you're going to sit in the van? You getting it all together? All right. Oh, that's a little scary for me. This is in my imagination. Ladies and gentlemen, I just turned 31 years old. And I, oh, you, know, you, know, you know you're tall when you're bigger than a goddamn tree. Look at this. Shit. Is it? <laughs> ah, you go out with me. You be my girl. Ah. I should tell you, I'm 6'9". It's a, it's a lot of pressure on a white man, actually. And, uh, yeah, 6'9". Jack, uh, Jack of the Beanstalk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's okay. Good, good, good to have you out of the clinic. <laughs> It's okay. Show me on the dolly where the tall man touched you. Show me on the dolly. Show me on the dolly. I'm just kidding. You. It gets a little scary. It's, it's television. Show me on the dolly. Okay. No, he's coming up here. I'm on my own, my man. I'm on my own, brother. Please. It's okay. It's okay. He's going to wear off. I love it. I love it. Look at the attorney in the, in the front row going, I'm going to get the car, honey. I'll get the car. Honey. This is in my imagination. Don't I look like Greg Brady and Herman Munster had a child? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> I do. I look like one of the Brady kids and Herman got together. I love Herman. I feel like the Herman Munster of the 90s. I really do. Isn't he, isn't he scary? <laughs> Oh, 
other than when I'm at the airport, when I have to walk through the metal detector. Because at my height, when you have to walk through the metal detector, you just, you know, you have to duck. And when tall people have to duck, you just feel really geeky, you know? So I just, I just wait in line like Herman. And then they'll say, okay, well, the next person in line, please walk forward and take out keys, coins, or any metal object out of your pocket, please. Well, certainly. <laughs> Oh, Grandpa! Grandpa! I think I got a boo-boo. <laughs> but it's airport. Thank you very much. Thank you, please, no. Thank you. All right, all right, man, for sure. Didn't I see you last week at a Grateful Dead concert in front of the speaker with a scarf going? They're nice guys. How are you, sir? Phil Collins, ladies and gentlemen. Give a hand. Phil Collins is here today. I love it. The Jewish lady turns around. Where is Phil Collins? I have all his eight tracks. Hello, darling. How are you? Could have been an athlete, but I could have been an athlete. Six foot nine white boy. No one came up to me. No one said, here's a ball. Put it in. <laughs> Throw it. That's all you got to do. Now, I look at the athletes. I was terrible, though, growing up. You know, I'm a, you know, we all know that Jews don't dribble. We're not athletes. I mean, what can I tell you? And I love hockey. Let me tell you, you see a Jew on ice, he's in a morgue. Seriously, we're really not very athletic. Are you? It's crazy. I... Show you how bad of an athlete I was? I could not make Little League. I used to play T-ball. And I used to strike out. Remember T-ball? They put the ball right in front of you on a T. And my dad, he was 6'5", 250. He was like, just hit the damn ball, could you? And I was like, can I pet the puppy? And let me tell you something. You strike out in T-ball, you're going to school on that shorter bus. You know what I'm talking about? You guys have been great. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you. And ahead of them. Thank you, Thank you Brad. And now, here's Kelsey Grammer. And here he comes, Adam Sandler. Thank you. Hi, how are you? All right. Well, nice to be here. <clears throat> My yacht. Very nice of you. He's a, he's a mooch, man. He's a mooch. Everyone calls him the king. He's a big mooch. <clears throat> well, um, I'm uh, away from home right now. Uh, my daddy, I talk to him a lot. My dad's name is Adam. Also, my name's Adam. My father's name is Adam. Having the same name as your father, it's all right. You know, until your voice changes, my friends would always call up, is Adam there? My father would say, this is Adam. My friends would say, yeah, Adam, you were so wasted last night. <laughs> <laughs> miss the whole family. I mean, I've been sick, sick a little lately, and, uh, you know, I miss the family care I used to get. One thing I don't miss when my mom would uh, rub the Vicks vapor rub on me. And then that was an awkward moment, you know, when she would rub the Vicks vape rub on my chest. That was kind of weird, you know, awkward for me and my mother. She's rubbing it on my chest, you know, we're making eye contact occasionally. It's kind of like, you know, Mom, we're just good friends, right? You know? I, I'm not saying I did anything with my mother, I'm just saying I think I could have. You know? <laughs> you know? So I am out here alone, away from the family. It's horrible. Being alone, it was my birthday a couple weeks ago, and I threw a surprise party for myself. I uh, parked a car down the street, tried to fool myself, you know, and uh, I set a pinata up with a blindfold and a baseball bat, and uh, ended up at my neighbor's house beating up their grandmother. I, 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 I cracked her over the head pretty hard, too. But I do, I did, uh, I, I did, uh, land myself a girlfriend. I've got a girlfriend right now out here, and she's always telling me I'm self-centered, so self-centered. She told me that there. You're so self-centered. All you do is talk about yourself. And I'm like, what else do I do? You know? That's, I'm interested. <laughs> girlfriend. She's always telling me the, the basic girlfriend thing, like a lot of girlfriends say to their boyfriends, always treat me different when you're with your friends. Whenever we're around your friends, you just act so differently. So, uh, now, even when I'm alone, I call her the, the money-sucking wench, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, 
listening, uh, listening to a breakup song the other day. A lot of breakup songs have the same theme in the song. You know, the guy's singing in the song, uh, Baby, you're seeing somebody new, but if he treats you bad, I'll always be here for you because I love you very much. This should make it a little more um, realistic. You're seeing somebody new, if he treats you bad, good. Uh, why should I suffer alone, you whore? Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry to... I wish that I always wish death on a girlfriend if I break out with her. Just not because I hate her so much. It's just easier when my friends call me up. What happened? Oh, she's dead. You know. Uh, right. Well, I'll uh, leave you with what my pop always used to tell me growing up: laugh and the world laughs with you. Cry and I'll give you a reason to cry, you little pansy. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Thanks, Adam. And now, Max Alexander. Do you feel this? <laughs> In San Francisco, they're running at this point. How are you? Great. I'm doing a lot of traveling. It's, uh, went to Europe. Are people going to travel in Europe? Yeah. yeah. It sucks. It's, uh, it is so old. The food, people think the food's great. I was in Spain. They fry everything in Spain. Everything that's fried. At, at night, if you listen real carefully, you hear this. Uh, uh, it's actually the hardening of the arteries <laughs> of the population of Madrid. And the bathrooms in Europe, they're horrible. They are, I, I came home, I kissed my toilet. It was the first thing I did. <laughs> As we have the American standard. That's why it says American standard. Uh, we have the greatest toilets in the world. It's, there's not, there's, uh, the toilet paper in Spain, you could cut diamonds with it. <laughs> I'm sitting on the bowl filing my nails with a sheet of it going, oh, this is going to hurt. <laughs> I try to do a lot of traveling. You want to go to a foreign country? Go to Canada. You from Canada? Canada is great, most of it. Which part are you from? Oh, that sucks. That's a... Oh, well, Canada is great. I went there. You know, if you want to go to a foreign country, they look like us, they sound like us. It's like America light. You f <laughs> it, it's great. The only difference is you have like a speed limit. You're, you're, you have kilometers per hour. We have miles per hour. Kilometers are what? Double? I cross the border in Washington. I see sign speed limit 120. <laughs> I'm cruising. <laughs> I saw a sign, school zone, slow down to 60. <laughs> the least I could do. <laughs> Very fast children in Canada. <laughs> they just bolt out there. I also got a, I, today I went to the mall. I went to this place called the Beverly Center. If you don't know what it is, it's a very upscale type of place. Uh, too many rich people go there. I saw somebody show up in a Mercedes Benz station wagon. What kind of moron <laughs> buys a Mercedes-Benz station wagon? I mean, what did they do? Walk into the showroom and go, you know, I need something to haul some crap around in. <laughs> you have something for 90 thou? <laughs> it's like buying a Rolls-Royce pickup. It's a... Uh, Give me that Lamborghini van. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> so I go into, into this mall. It has indoor parking. I mean, you, you know any type of mall. I get stopped for speeding. Indoors. I couldn't believe it. You always see those signs. Speed limit. Five miles per hour. You can't drive. Five miles per hour. You start your car. You're doing what? Seven? <laughs> I get pulled over by security. <laughs> they weren't even in a car. <laughs> They're running alongside me. I felt like I was the president in a parade. <laughs> I have no idea what this guy wants. I roll down my window, he, window, he sticks his face and he goes, do you have any idea how fast you were going? <laughs> I don't know. Six? I'm young, I'm nuts, I'm crazy. But <laughs> well, we have you on radar. 
You were going nine. Nine? <laughs> I laugh in your face. <laughs> My car shimmies at eight. <laughs> Silly things. Getting older. Thank God. That's the best thing to do is get older. Once you stop, you're dead. It's uh, getting older. My hair is starting to come in gray. It's uh, my nose hair. I'm dying it now with a magic marker every morning. and uh, It's not working, but I'm getting very high. And uh, I really don't care. It's, you know, that uh, my testicles are getting bigger. What the hell is with that, guys, huh? You wake up one morning, all of a sudden you have luggage with you? <laughs> like you sit down on a chair naked and you go, this doesn't have padding, oh my God. <laughs> Getting all the... I, mean, I want to teach you a practical joke. Because you're here, you're, not, you're going to need some jokes to tell people that you're at a place, you heard jokes. Give you a practical Anybody here could do this joke. But only use it when you need a real laugh, when you really have to get somebody to really laugh with you. Go in somebody's car. Oh, by the way, you shouldn't like this person. <laughs> Because he's going to get hurt, okay? He might even die, but you know, it's real funny, so try it, okay? Go in a person's car, you sit in the back seat, let them drive. Go anywhere you have to pay a toll. When you get to that toll booth, quietly lie down in the back seat, put your hands behind your back and do this. And you'll laugh. <laughs> Thank you. You've been terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Next on stage, John Caponera. I'm watching the news last month. The news reporter's interviewing these NRA radicals. You know, they're pissed off that they're trying to pass more laws to abolish the sale of machine guns, which is really a great move in the right direction. I mean, you know, I believe in the right to bear arms, but who needs a machine gun in their house? Right? If we come to this, right? Anyway, these guys are just livid over this. Hey, man! Right to bear arms, dude! <laughs> right to bear arms, man! Guess the Constitution! <laughs> so the news reporter I'm like, what do you need a machine gun in your house for? All right, okay. See, somebody shows up my door with an AK-47 or an M-16 or an AC-15. All I got is my rifle. I'm dead, man! <laughs> I'm history! That happens every day, doesn't it? An army just happens to show up at your door. <laughs> Honey, isn't that the 3rd Infantry standing on our front line? It's a good thing I got my AK-47. We'd have been in a heap of trouble. This guy's not too paranoid, is he? Flowers. Flowers? I didn't order no flowers. Sissy, did you order flowers? Billy, go get my AK-47. Trying to take my machine gun away from me! <laughs> they already took drinking and driving away from me! <laughs> Before you know it, they're gonna ban tractor pulls and wet t-shirt contests! Then what the hell am I gonna do? <laughs> I might as well just shoot myself, but I can't! They're gonna take my gun! <laughs> you know, the NRA says its biggest contention is that the hunters use these to hunt with. You know, what hunter is going to be proud of bagging a buck or a deer with an Uzi? <laughs> I mean, where's the sportsmanship? It's like, hey, Earl, step inside. I got Bambi about 25, yeah. <laughs> I got it! <laughs> they, <laughs> they have a freaking chain. You know, it's funny, but it's scary because there's people out there like that. Huh? I used to work with people like that on the docks in Chicago, loading trucks. You know? It's one of these jobs where it's chic to have no teeth and smoke camels. You know, everybody talked like this. What's up? <laughs> Not much, they most stuff. What's up with you? <laughs> they weren't the brightest guys in the world. One guy had a tattoo, born to load freight. <laughs> he had a third grade education but he had all the answers to the world's problems you ever meet these people they flunk out of kindergarten but they know everything he stand out in front of his truck all day and just talk nonsense <laughs> I'll tell you what's wrong with the Middle East John I'll 
I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Too many Arabs, man. <laughs> you got 17 different religious factions fighting over the same land. You're never going to have any peace over there. 17, think about it. Druze, Israelis, Shiite, Christians, Muslims, PLO, Qantas, Knights of Columbus, Shriners. You're never going to have any peace. I'll tell you what they should do. I'll tell you right now. All those different religions, they should just have one big softball tournament, man. Double elimination, winner gets the rule of country. Next year they have another tournament. So on, so on, so on. Keep it going each year, you know, keep it going. You know, keep it going, like keep it going. <laughs> I'll tell you what's wrong, Nick Rival. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> coffee, man. One word, coffee. It's all that country produces, man, coffee. You try drinking 45 cups of coffee on an empty stomach, you want to blow somebody's head off, too? <laughs> all strong out. Coffee and bananas, that's all they produce, man. Those people are either strung out or constipated. It's military city. <laughs> this guy had the answer for everything. He always had a tape measure in his back pocket. You ever meet these people? They carry tape measures around for no apparent reason. I mean, we loaded trucks. We didn't measure a damn thing. It's one of these guys that would walk in your house. I think everyone has an uncle like this. You know someone like this. He'd walk in your house, the first thing you do, he'd walk. Did you use up there, huh? Is that three quarter half inch? Let me take a look at that. Kind of look at that. <laughs> That's seven eighths. I'm <laughs> using a little bit. You can't get that stuff no more. I'll be a son of a puppet. Louis, check this out. Seven eighths inch quarter on three quarter inch housing unit. I'll be a son of a it's like, who cares? Get out of my house, you ass. The guy, he knew the lingo for everything. It was uncanny. I'm getting dressed by my locker one day. He comes over. What kind of underwear is that, huh? That's that new Haynes model? Double line waistband, triple reinforced cotton crotch. That's what I thought. Hey, what do you got inside there? A three-quarter inch. <laughs> I'll be a son of a bitch. That is three quarter inch. Look at that little. Hey, Louie, check this out. Three quarter inch. I'll be a son of a bitch. You can't get that stuff no more, you know that? Japanese model, huh? <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, John. And now comes John Ferrentino. We need a volunteer from the audience. This guy, why don't you come up? Let's have a big round of applause for him. Have a seat. What's your name? Brian. Brian, how you doing? Stool pigeon, I'm sorry. Brian. Brian, we're going to show you one of the oldest effects in magic. This is an effect Brian done with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rings of solid gold, which I've had chrome plated <laughs> to protect the gold. Like you do, Brian, let's take that ring and examine it. Are there any openings in that ring of any kind? Are there any openings in that ring, Brian? No. There's one here right in the center, Brian. You just gotta look for these things, all right? <laughs> Don't do that, Brian. You look like a hemorrhoid. All right, here we go. Watch you, Brian, let's take this ring and examine it. Are there any openings in that ring? Are there any openings in that ring, Brian? Not at all. <laughs> I just showed you where it was, Brian. Where is it? right in the middle, Brian. <laughs> two minutes to Wapner. All right. Give me one, two, four, seven rings. You can see that each ring is round. Each ring is totally solid. What I'd like you to do is tap your hand across the top. Put your hand like that. Tap like this. If I tap your hand like this, we bring our hands in like this, and you see that the ring's completely linked. Bring my hands together. Tap one more time. Tap the rings. <laughs> Hold your hand out like this. Hold your hand out like this. Okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> it's good, man. 
can be, of course, the rings come apart like this. Take one in each hand. When you count to three, tap the rings right in the center. Count of three, okay? <laughs> Structures get more difficult in the bonus rounds, all right? All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Think of these like this. Unfortunately, not doing a thing to yours. Why don't you see if you can put those together? Why don't you see if you can take those apart? And I'll continue. We have here one, two, three, four separate rings. They say the hardest thing in magic is to link three rings in midair. It would look like this. See that each ring is round. Each ring is totally solid. Watch as a solid completely passes through a solid. Yeah, some people feel this act is totally Mickey Mouse. Honestly, <laughs> give the guy a break, he's a basket case. All the rings double length, triple length, or of course, single length. All I like to do is tap your hand across the top. We'll go back like this into a chain. I'll show you how to take them apart, one in each hand. What do you want me to do? One in each hand. <laughs> Here. Have a cookie, all right? There we go. Yeah, we go like this. Okay. Bring your hand up like this. Give him a take just like this. It becomes a swing. Simply turning my wrist, it becomes a reverse swing. <laughs> Bring my hand up like this, it becomes a flower. Like this, ready? Wow. All right, see that the rings completely go back like this to a chain. Take them apart, it's really simple. You go like this, now the ring travels down like this. Off the bottom, coming straight up and linking through the top. Do that one more time because I enjoy doing it. And you can't. We go like this. Ring travels down like this. Off the bottom, straight up through the top, proving that each ring is round, each ring is solid, each ring passes through each other, just like that. Thanks. How'd you do? How'd you do? Great. How'd you, did you get those apart? Are you kidding? <laughs> Gave it a hell of a shot. <laughs> I'll show you how we create the illusion of the oblong ring. You don't have one, thank God. What you do is you hold one ring like this in front of the other. Bring your hands up like this, squeeze tight. Tight, just like this. Turn out like that. From one in front of the other, create the illusion that they're linked. Just go like this and show that they are linked like that in a chain. How'd you do? Good. All right. There is a way of putting these together. It's with a hacksaw. What you do is you put your hand right here. Yeah, put your hand right here. We go one, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, the ring's completely late. With the use of a hacksaw, let's give them a nice big round of applause. Thanks. Nice. All right. I see something neat. Watch. Thanks. I'll do a trick with it because you insisted. Vanishing steel pipe illusion. Start off with a 10 inch solid steel bar. Clang, clang, clang. <laughs> It's important to prove everything's real. Cover it up, we say the magic words. <laughs> <laughs> Be working on that one a little bit. My name is John Fertini, I've been a great audience. Thank you very much, good night. Thanks, John. And now, here she comes, Judy Tenuta. pseudo virgins look at you oh, if you sit together long enough you can all get your cycles at the same time no. so, okay so I'm trying to lead a normal life and um you know today I was in the park breastfeeding the pigeons. <laughs> I 
am the Earth Mother! I want to give! Yes! And walking with me, walking with me, was Mayor Tom Bradley. It could happen. And, <laughs> yeah, Mayor Tom Bradley's walking with me. He goes, hey, Judy, you don't think we have too many homeless people, do you? I said, oh, no. <laughs> no, it's perfectly normal for the sidewalk to be soft. <laughs> because I cannot always astral project. <laughs> and sitting next to me was this major toad with a towel on his head. <laughs> I said, oh, nice time for a hot oil treatment. <laughs> Sabu. <laughs> and then he starts breathing on me. <sighs> He's breathing on me and he has coffee breath. Like one. <laughs> I know it, honey. It was nasty. Yeah, he had coffee breath like Juan Valdez's panties. <sighs> okay, that part was good. But then. Then he wouldn't stop breathing on me. And he's going, hey, Judy. <sighs> my dog died last June. <sighs> I said, well, did you have to bury him in your mouth? Because <laughs> I'm trying to make friends. Yeah. So then the stewardess comes over the loudspeaker. Stewardess. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! Yes, between you and me, this guy could pass for straight, but it wouldn't take much of a prison term <laughs> to make him switch over, you know, like a parking ticket. <laughs> Would do it, ramming speed. So. So he comes over the loudspeaker, he comes over the loudspeaker, he goes, hi, I'm Bruce. I said, yeah, we're surprised. <laughs> I'm Bruce and I'll be serving lunch as soon as we get off the ground. I said, yeah, like you've ever touched ground, Tinkerbell. <laughs> so now, wait, wait, stud puppet, now, he recognizes me and he goes, you know, Miss Tenuta, I'm noticing the space in front of your feet is not gonna be big enough for your accordion case. We're gonna have to find a space big enough. I said, well, bend over. <laughs> Baked buffalo surprise. And, oh wait, but then by this time, you know, Sabu, Sabu is sitting next to me and, and he's asking if he can borrow my lipstick so he can renew his dot. <laughs> nice one, Slurpee. So, so I, so I'm trying to eat my meal, you know, baked buffalo surprise. And then Sabu says, Judy, don't eat meat. It's a sin. Eat a vegetable. I said, well, can I dip you in ketchup? <laughs> so of course he takes this as a come on. And who wouldn't? Who would not? Because I am the love goddess. Yes! Yes! That's right, that's right, porno pockets. I can make mere men put on aprons and can red beets. Yeah, I'd like
like to put some huggies on you, Tano. <laughs> so then, so then Sabu says to me, he says, Judy, he says, Judy, he says, Judy. He had an accordion too. Could happen. He says, Judy, Judy, you should be nice to me, Judy. <laughs> Judy. Judy, be nice to me. I'm sensitive. I just want to sit around with a bunch of men and cry. <laughs> I said, well, go to a Clippers game. <laughs> Judy. Next up, Carol Leifer. Let me get a little age gauge here of our audience tonight. How many people remember when Rocky wasn't Sylvester Stallone, it was a flying squirrel? <laughs> remember when the word mall was what a bear did to some unlucky campers? <laughs> remember when kids used to bring their 45s to school and they were records? <laughs> Remember when the worst thing about crack was if you stepped on it, you'd break your mother's back? <laughs> but I feel young, and I think that's what's important, ladies and gentlemen, and do you know how I stay feeling young? I'll share my secret with you. I live in a senior citizen retirement community. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's getting all the looks at the pool? <sighs> Thank you, Carol. And now, here he comes, Jeff Foxworthy. Thank you much. How y'all doing? Yeah. My dad found out I was going to be on the show. My dad called me today to give me jokes. You, the, the filthiest jokes you've ever heard in your life. Just, just, oh, yeah. You could have told these jokes in a truck stop. Truckers would be going, hey, 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 there's mechanics in here. You want to watch it? <laughs> I had a weird day today. My wife and I were watching TV this afternoon, and one of these daddy long-legged spiders walks across the floor, and my wife wants me to kill it, but I thought, they don't hurt anybody. I'll just pick him up and put him outside, you know? But, but they're real brittle, and like somewhere in the process, I knocked about six of his legs off, you know? And he's out there going, thanks for the help, buddy. I'm an octoplegic now, thank you very much. Regular meal on wheels out here. My wife, I love my wife. I love women. Now, I don't understand everything about them, but I do love them. Like, you know, I don't understand. Why is it when a woman gets in the bed, the temperature of her feet and butt drop to below freezing? It can be 98 degrees outside. That butt is ice cold, you know? And wanna put it on you. It's like snuggling with a butterball turkey. <laughs> Honest to God, I can lick my hand, put it on my wife's butt, it'll stick. <laughs> I don't understand this. People pointing at each other. And if that wasn't bad enough, girls, then y'all want verification. Tell me. Tell me I look like a troll. <laughs> there ain't no way I'm telling you that. 
Because men know once it reaches this point, we can't win. If we disagree with you, girls, if we go, no, baby, you look great, you go, you're a liar. And if we agree with you, we live the sex life of a monk till Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Has no bearing on how pretty the woman is in, because my wife is a beautiful girl. She really is. You hear her describe herself, it sounds like bearded goat woman from hell. <laughs> if she looked like that, I'd chain her up in the garage, charge three bucks for people to look at her. Yeah? <laughs> All right, y'all stay back. This is scary stuff here. Here she is. That's my wife. <laughs> Women worry more about everything, like their skin. They have all these products for dry skin, chapped skin, combination skin. You ever known a man with combination skin? Somewhere out on the construction site, you know, Ed, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But you got dry cheekbones and an oily forehead. That's combination skin. Thank you. Thank you. It's like we smell the same thing. My wife always asks me, do I, do I smell good? Like the way I smell? See, because if men have an odor, it's usually an accident, you know? It's like, Charles, what is that alluring fragrance? <laughs> oh, that's Michelob hit a bump in the truck. <laughs> men and women, they both care about smell. But see, women go to trouble to smell good. You know, men are more like, hey, does this stink too bad to wear one more time? <laughs> Maybe I should put it in the dryer. Men love that dryer. Uh, we find a shirt in the sewer, put it in the dryer and wear it. Uh, some gun ready to go right there. Look at that. You know what amazes me? Women can take a nap without sticking their hand down the front of their pants. How do they do that? See, men have a sleep button located right there. We just take that hand, put it on that button. And... I think women feel a sneeze coming on. Every time before my wife sneezes, she reaches in the purse, pulls out a tissue. <laughs> Men have no idea we're gonna sneeze. We'll be on a bus somewhere. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry about your shirt. You can put that in a dryer, that'll be all right. Yeah. It's a new age for women now, too. See, for the first time in history, more women have jobs than men. Do you know that? I think that's a great sign. What's not good is even though women work all day long, in 1990, they still come home and clean up about 99% of the things get cleaned up around the house. But you know what? Women aren't as proud of their 99% as men are of our one. <laughs> we clean something up, we're going to talk about it all year long. It might be on the news, you don't know. I did it for you, sweet pea. I'm going to go take a nap now, all right? Thank you. You guys have been great. God bless. And now, here she comes, Rosie O'Donnell. You look good. Your show's Oprah Winfrey. I love her. I do, but she's way too white on TV. She is. She's so white. You ever see her? She's like, today on the Oprah Winfrey Show, we're going to be speaking to female madams, women who sell other women. Nicole, who owns a legal brothel in Nevada. Nicole, how much money do you make and how much do the girls actually get to keep? Nicole says no comment. Oprah goes, we're going to go to commercial. I know during the commercial, Oprah is not that white. I know she probably goes, girl, I don't know if you've seen a name on this show when you walk in, but this here be the Oprah Winfrey show, Miss Thing. Yes, it is, girlfriend. This is not the Nicole show. I saw no sign that said the Nicole show. No. Girl, this is Miss Oprah Winfrey show. Yes, it is. Did you hear the rules when you came in? Did my girl tell you the rules? Shamaya, Lawanda, Latrice. She's scaring Phil Donahue. Trying to look good. Everyone tries to look good here. You have to look fit. You have to look perfect. It's kind of annoying. It really is. I'm wearing the Esprit clothing line tonight, which is basically Garanimals for adults. <laughs> 
Well, things have been improving, though. They've been improving. I have been in Glamour magazine three times. Did you see me? In the don't column? Don't wear that sweater with those pants. That was me. They cover your eyes like that's gonna hide your identity, yeah. Like I'm sure friends and family are leafing through, you know, that looks like Rosie, but with her eyes covered up, I just can't tell. <laughs> You have to look. Then people get so good, they look so good, they take off their clothes and pose naked, and people make fun of them. You know, they make fun of those women who pose naked in those magazines for like millions of dollars. Let's face it, if I had a body like those women, I'd be butt naked every day in the frozen food section of Ralph's. I really would. Dried up all the rings, all the ends of the bottle, when all is about again. It could have happened, you know. I think it's true because. Stop. Oh, stop. I think it's true because, because Elvis Presley's mother used to babysit for Billy Idol. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that, but it's true. <laughs> but here I am, a comedian, you know, and I never wanted to be a comic, and my little brother's four years old, and that's all he wants to be, comedian. It's very flattering. Every time I'm home, he tries to tell me a joke. Have you ever had a four-year-old tell you a joke? <laughs> Takes about two hours. Has no semblance or order, wanders aimlessly. You have to know when it's over. <laughs> Well, the I went to school one time and went right on the mock that girl. Dad's big muscle, right? Love his face, got him above from his head. Hey, stupid mother, if you don't stop a beef from most, maybe he man could come over and he man would say, Bye!